Hello students, in this video we'll prove the function y equals sine of x is a continuous function for any value x equals c. So y equals sine of x is continuous at any x equals c. And so to prove this, we're going to first prove that it's continuous at zero. So since the absolute value of sine of x is less than or equal to the absolute value of x, right, that statement is true for all values of x, we can say that the limit as x goes to zero, this implies that the limit as x goes to zero of the absolute value of sine of x is going to be what? Well, it's stuck between negative x and x is equal to zero by the squeeze theorem, and that's of course equal to the sine of zero. And so that says that the limit, as it can drop the absolute value now because it's equal to zero, the limit as x goes to zero of sine of x is equal to the sine of zero, and that shows that sine is continuous at zero. So sine of x is continuous at x equals zero. That's the first step of the problem. Now, if I want to show that the sine is continuous at any point c, we need to find, so next, I'd like to show that the limit as x approaches c of sine of x minus sine of c is equal to zero, because that would tell me that the function sine is continuous at that point by sort of throwing the sine of c on the other side of the equation. Now, to do this, we're going to need a trigonometric identity, so I need to figure out how to estimate the ratio of sine, uh, the difference sine x and sine c. So let's we'll recall the following fact. So let's recall that the sine of alpha plus beta is the sine of alpha, the cosine of beta, plus the sine of beta, the cosine of alpha, and that the sine of alpha minus beta is the sine of alpha, the cosine of beta, minus the sine of beta, the cosine of alpha, the angle addition formulas. And so if I subtract these results over here, I can conclude the following. I can conclude the sine of alpha plus beta minus the sine of alpha minus beta is equal to what? If I subtract these equations, the first terms drop out, and I'm going to get a what? I'm going to get a cosine of alpha sine of beta, okay? And so now what do I want? I want alpha plus beta to be equal to x, alpha plus beta to be equal to x, and I want alpha minus beta, alpha minus beta, to be equal to c. That would give me an identity for this, and so what will happen over here, so if I subtract these equations over here, what are we going to get? So if I subtract these equations, if I add these equations together, I get two alpha, is equal to x plus c, so that says that alpha is equal to x plus c over 2. And then what will beta be? So if I subtract these equations, I'm going to have that 2 beta is equal to x minus c, x minus c, so that says that beta is equal to x minus c over 2. So now our relationship using these trigonometric identities, I can conclude the following. So I can conclude that the cosine of what? The cosine of alpha, which is x plus c over 2, times the sine and of course, I have a 2 over here, too. If I subtract them, there should be a 2 over here. So 2. Okay? So 2 times the cosine of alpha times the sine of beta. Now, what's the sine of beta? The sine of beta is going to be a x minus c over 2. x minus c over 2 is equal to our difference over here. Is equal to the sine of x minus the sine of c. Right? And so now, of course, in absolute value, what's happening over here? So in absolute value, as x tends to c, this x minus c tends to 0. So by the continuity, by continuity at 0, at x equals 0, we can conclude that this term over here, because x minus c, is, as x goes to c, x minus c tends to 0. So by the continuity at 0, the sine of x minus c over 2 tends to 0 as x tends to c from continuity to 0. And so now what do we have? So now I can conclude that the limit as x approaches c of sine of x minus sine of c is the same thing as the limit as x approaches c of 2 cosine of x plus c over 2, and then times the sine of x minus c over 2 now, of course, as x goes to c, this just goes to the cos 2 cosine of c, so this is what? This is 2 cosine of c, right? And that's just a bounded thing, so that's less than, this is a bounded thing over here, so we know that's going to be less than or equal to 1, times what? Times 0. So technically, I've assumed that the, the cosine is continuous, which we're not allowed to do, but I know that this expression, the absolute value of this expression over here, is going to be equal to 0, so this limit is equal to 0, and that proves that the sine of x is continuous at c. Thank you very much.